Hey, Mark, how are you doing? Good, how are you? Pretty good, pretty good. This is, uh, I'm Daddy McDook. I have a Bengals podcast, uh, the number one Bengals podcast on Believe. And, uh, oh, great. Yeah, and I have a YouTube show about the team. So that's why John asked me to talk to you about, uh, you know, pizza and, the, and football as well. So really Sounds nice. Good. Yeah, really nice to meet you. So, uh, yeah, so I have a, a few questions for you about sure. pizza because I'm a big pizza guy. That's actually why I was late to the interview. I was, I was eating pizza. But, uh-huh. you know, when I think of pizza, I think of Papa John, right? Because he is really, he's like the American kind of Santa Claus, if you will. He's like the Papa Noel oh, yeah. of pizza. And I remember back when the 49ers played the Ravens, the, he gave out free pizzas, you know, to half the country, whoever guessed the winning team, yeah. because yeah. obviously, you know, those who were, you know, he divided the country like naughty and nice, and those who chose correctly got pizza, and those who didn't, you know, they didn't get exactly. pizza. And, uh, and what I like about him is all the innovative ways he's, he's given us pizza. So like the, you know, the garlic butter, you know, we used to throw out the yeah, crust. Yeah. But garlic, you know, is very good for your brain health and your heart. And so it's a way to make pizza more nutritious. So what do you like to add to your Papa John's pizza? So I'm a big fan of the garlic dipping sauce. I also, um, you know, I don't go too crazy with the toppings. I'm more of just like a pepperoni and sausage kind of guy. But I do like that um, new New York style pizza because you can fold it in half. They're like the big New York style slices. So... um, that's kind of that's really my favorite part about it um you know because everybody has their own style with like chicago deep dish style and like detroit style but i'm more of a new york style guy yeah you know i am too and that's i was gonna that was gonna be my follow-up question i'm glad you answered it because new york pizza is actual pizza in my opinion you know you look at like chicago style and it's more like a pizza pool Right. It's like it's like it's like you have this this deep you have to take a swim. Yeah, you have to take a swim in the pizza and the sauce and the cheese. And as much as I love pizza, you know, I I can't breathe after the Chicago (laughs) style. But then you have the Detroit style, which to me, it seems to be making some sort of a statement, some anti-scientific statement, because we all know that pizza is round and they insist that it is a square, that it's supposed to be a flat and a square. And it just. It seems to. It seems like there's too much of an agenda there. Yeah, I agree. So yeah. That's funny. So how so how do you like to eat pizza? Because I like to stack up all the slices, one on one. Oh wow. Yeah, and then you eat it like corn on the cob because that way I'm getting my vegetables too. So how do you like there to eat you your go. pizza? Uh, I'm more you know folded in half kind of guy. Oh, you and said that. You know, I'm not paying it. Yeah. yeah. I was actually just thinking about pizza. That's why I didn't. Yeah, no, I didn't catch that. Some people eat like the crust first, and no, some the, people, um, you know, you can do it any way you want as long as you're not using a fork. And you knife. know, with the with the crust first, that's actually there's a stat that is like a quarter of uh, you know Los Angeles and San Francisco they eat the crust first. I heard that. I you, saw that. And you know that's what that crazy. is? That is so representative of the fake kind of veganism. They're like, I'm not gonna eat the cheese. I'm not gonna eat the cheese. They start with the bread, but they end up eating the cheese. So it is. I think it's more of a demonstration than a. There's no sincere. Yeah. But so enough about pizza. Let's talk about what pizza its primary purpose is, and that's to power football players like you. That's right. And you know, I remember when you defeated my Cincinnati Bengals, and you went on to the AFC Championship game, and you did that two years in a row, and you were you were I don't know your first and second year in the league. You're very young, like Joe Burrow. And you, 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 you know, you, you, you managed to keep the team in contention despite not having, let's say, a very, let's say, high-flying offense. Now, Joe Burrow, Joe Burrow has had a high-flying offense in the regular season. In the postseason, he hasn't. So what I want to ask you is when he's going up against, you know, Aaron Donald and, you know, Von Miller and, you know, all these, these incredible pass rushers, and we know that the Bengals, their offensive line woes have really shown themselves in the postseason. What can he do? Where can he attack? You know, who, who would, you know, Tyler Boyd, CJ Uzama, what, what would be your uh, mentality to, to move the team along and, and, you know, just keep, let's say, their head above water enough to, you know, outscore the Rams? 
Yeah, I think uh, part of it's just going to have to be keeping that defensive line off balance. And the way you do that is you got to mix up your play calls and mix them up consistently. So, for example, you want, you know, a quick game followed up by a deep play action, followed up by a movement like a naked, followed up by a drawback. So you're constantly changing the throwing position of the quarterback and changing up the timing. And then to do that, when you have those longer patterns and and longer developing plays, you got to get help inside with the halfbacks, with the tight ends. They got to help on the edges and interior. And basically that just means like on their way out, on their route, on their check down route, that they just get a piece of one of those rushers. And, you know, I've had coaches say it to running backs, like get some rib meat because basically you go and take a shot at their ribs and just try and slow them down. And hopefully towards the end of the game, you wear on those guys a little bit and take a little speed off them. That is fantastic. Do you mind if I share that with, with the, with the yeah, no Bengals? Okay. So I am glad that you apparently are rooting for the Bengals. That's what I gathered. You gave us some, <laughs> you gave us some insider information there. There you go. There you go. So do you, do you think that they will be able to pull it up? What is your prediction for the game? Um, I mean, they got to block them. That's, that's the big story is how, how are they going to keep those guys off balance? How are they going to keep Joe upright? And, you know, this is a team where you can't have nine sacks like they did in that uh, divisional game against Tennessee. That was incredible. And for Joe Burrow to still be standing and playing the way he has after that is um, a real testament to him and how tough he is. But, um, you know, I could see them pulling off a huge upset and, you know, continuing with this momentum. And part of it is, you know, it feels like they're almost playing with house money, you know, like nobody expected it anyway. They're almost like uh, ignorance is bliss. Like it's almost like they don't even maybe maybe not that they don't acknowledge the magnitude of what they're doing. But, it, you know, I don't know who else really thought this was going to happen. Right. And um so I think they're 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 playing with house money in a way. So that that's good for them. You know, it's almost like being a rookie. Yeah. You're in like a rookie bubble. You don't realize, you know, what how many games you've won or what you know small accomplishments you've had along the way. You just put your head down and play. And you know, once you get older, once you know, you almost have too much information at times, and um, you know, it's, it almost works against you. Yeah. Well. Well, I know two people who, who thought they would be here. One is <laughs> Joe Burrow. And uh, one... Yeah, and the, yeah, I said it on the show. I predicted they'd win the Super Bowl. But, uh, there you go. Yeah, but I mean, really, it, that was kind of the ideal scenario. You know, they, they, they put the pieces around Joe Burrow. Not on the offensive line, but everywhere else. You know, you look at the... You know, adding Jamar Chase, we talked about it last year. The only element he was missing was the deep ball. And if you look yeah. at his deep passes... At LSU, they were to Jamar Chase. So you add him, all of a sudden, his deep ball, that was the missing part of his game, and that was, you know, completed. And then the defense, the defense didn't have attitude. It didn't have bite. We had some veterans who were around for a while, and they were frustrated with the losing. We added some players with some real, you know, like guys that maybe other teams didn't value that much, like Eli Apple, yep. you know, Chidobe, yep. Awuzia, or even Mike Hilton. You know, he felt slighted by the Pittsburgh Steelers. But they, they have yeah. an edge, and they, they, they are team players. And we, we put these pieces around the defense, and all of a sudden, you know, even with just one pass rusher, really, one pr- premier pass rusher in Trey Hendrickson, yeah. the defense has come up every playoff game with big plays. So, oh, yeah. So, I mean, that yeah. interception last week, or whenever it was. Yeah. Uh, was every week, all three weeks. The all three weeks they've had, yeah. The, the, so against the uh, Titans, they, Eli Apple tipped the pass. And yeah, that's right. and then against the Jermaine Pratt, of course, the wild card picked it off in the, almost close to the end zone. And then last week against the Chiefs, uh, it was uh, Jesse Bates who tipped it to Von Bell. Yeah, that was a huge, huge play. And a player or two before that, Eli Apple almost had a pick six. So they're all they're all just know, waiting for the, the game. Yeah. yeah. So I, your prediction, it seems like you want to pick the Bengals. Can I get an official prediction from you? I don't know if I could take them. You know, um, 
I think they're going to be back. You know, I think they're going to have more opportunities in these next four years to really come back and get to this position again. I would love, you know, as as a friend of Matt Stafford's and being in the same draft class, I would love to see him win it uh, just because of everything he's been through in Detroit and finally getting a really good opportunity. That's pretty cool to me. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I wouldn't be upset if the Bengals won. But, um, you know, that'd be, that'd be incredible for Joe. Be the yeah. youngest kid or whatever, second youngest, and then Heisman National Championship and the Super Bowl. That's incredible. Yeah, and that injury and doing it in Cincinnati and all of that. But, okay, well, uh, thank you so much, Mark. Can I just one last thing? Would you ever be interested in coming on our show? It's a lot of fun. It's the it's a DNH of sports. It's on YouTube. If you come on our show, I promise you it's going to be a lot of fun. We have two excellent you know, Oh, I got to check you guys out. Yeah, yeah, definitely check us out. And we'd love to have you on, maybe in the off season, whenever you're, you're free again. Yeah, when you guys are uh, done parading around the city with your Super Bowl trophy. Appreciate it. So that's your prediction. Right. I finally got it. All right, yeah. buddy. Okay, thank you. Right. Take care, Mark. Have a good one, man. Okay, Bye. you too. Bye.